na iwa sa ningaw na ni Bakatara, baka binibin na tayo. Bula! Oi, eu sou a Sala Bilawa. Não vou ter que ir ao menos de aqui na Tinica Rona Caloco. É na Sina Levo de Monite que não vou agarrar um boca. Caco Neva Latana, não me suíne ser sari. Na Caixa Maria Andola Loma, Leão Neva Nininau. O Ngori que é de mais na de aqui na Tinica Rona Caloco. É na Sina Levo de Monite que não vou agarrar um boca. É na Bula FM. Namban 2 é na Sere. É Cui, Cui na Uai. Cui na Uai me bala. Dili, Dili, Sama e Dili. Nimbula, medango nimi lote na isoro tumboa. Nama kia uminarua kina ona na vya kavi moni tiki na vaka rombuka. Rongo mena vya sama kina vya baka baro takini ndreko malolo. Eno ridi ufiji wana na wongani vya niano. Ngai nama kia ukina. Pirated copies of Fiji All Blacks game found in DVD shops. Casino development in Nandi gets off the ground. And Prime Minister assures that the Constitution will bring change to Fiji. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spade and you're watching FBC News. Two days after the Flying Fijians and the Classic All Blacks match was televised live by the FBC, Pirated DVDs of the event are circulating around Fiji. FBC News Today confronted one such DVD outlet in Suva. Chanel Sivan with this exclusive story. This is Exotic Electro Movie World in Nina Street, Suva. We sent an individual to see if he could buy a copy of the Fiji vs All Blacks game. Honestly, I don't even want to watch the game. DVD in hand, I then confronted the salesman on where the DVD came from. Are you selling classic All Blacks versus Fiji? Are you selling this? Our cameraman just bought this from you for $3. Are you guys selling this? Yeah. You've got the license to sell it? No? How did you get this? Someone supplied us. Who supplied you? No idea. You got the copyright to get this? You know you can be fined? How many shops also you are selling this? I'm not sure. When did you get this? Just now. Just now? I, I heard that you've been selling this from yesterday. Just now. You got it just now. Could you reveal to us who you got this from? No? No idea. No idea? How much are you selling this for? Three dollars. How much? Three dollars. Three dollars. How many copies you have got at the moment? Only one. Last only? copy, yeah. Last copy. How many you sold? Two. We are absolutely disgusted with this sort of behavior. Uh, we pay a lot of money to get the rights to be able to uh, shoot this and, uh, and, and provide coverage for the public of Fiji. Uh, this is, you know, it is illegal. At the end of the day, it's illegal. And I would urge the people of Fiji to stop buying it because it's very clear that it is ours. Our team uh, worked really hard to put this thing together. They woke up early in the morning to set it up and uh, someone is basically benefiting from our hard work. This is the DVD which we obtained from Exotic Electro Movie World. Now let's see what's inside. On the top right hand corner, that is the FBC TV logo clearly shown. We called the company owner Nitin Nilesh Prasad who says he's unaware of the issue, and when pushed for further clarification, he declined to comment. Shanal Shivan, FBC News. It's understood the DVD outlet has more than 20 branches in the greater Suva area, and we believe all outlets are selling the pirate DVDs. A missing persons report has been filed for the 30-year-old disabled woman of Nausori, whose story was aired on FBC News last night. FBC News visited the woman's home this morning to find the house empty, with neither the woman nor her stepfather to be seen anywhere. Advisory councillor Doreen Singh says she also went to the house at midday to find it still empty. Questions sent to Permanent Secretary Health Dr. Eloni Thora and to the Medical Superintendent of St. Giles Hospital Dr. Penimbiu Koto remain unanswered this evening. 
The woman was found living in squalid conditions with no proper bedding or sanitary facilities. She was kept in a cage made of, of chicken mm. mesh and tied up at times. The Social Welfare Ministry will investigate the case of two disabled women living in inhumane conditions in Nausori and Nandi. Minister Dr. Chiko Luveni has confirmed that they will look into these incidents and has requested people to seek help instead of locking people up. Christopher Chand reports. Social welfare officers are now taking steps to ensure the two women get the help they need and may even take them in. Definitely we'll have our, our officers that will be visiting them and making an assessment of their situation and then plan out a strategy as to how we can move them out of the, such living conditions to something better. Dr. Luveni says help is available, but people need to overcome stigma. Both women have been locked up in their homes, isolated from the community, living in horrible conditions. Of course, I wouldn't like to see human beings being treated the same way. And it also shows that uh, uh, people with disabilities should let the state know, or let my ministry or the Ministry of Health know that they have such cases in their families so that we can train them on how to take care of them. Because most of them lock them up because they just don't know what to do. One of the victims lives in Nosori, while the second lives at Navakai in Nandi. Her family didn't allow us to film, but we have established how she has been living for the last 30 years. A person to live like a human being, human being, I couldn't stand it. Yeah. She need help, she need help. I couldn't stand that a human being can be living in that kind of condition. Yeah. I even I saw some picture in the paper, in the, in the TV from other places in the world. I, I, I couldn't imagine that thing can help in here. It's our place, the front door. I couldn't imagine. The two incidents have gripped the attention of all Fijians. Their harrowing tale has become a national issue, with many waiting to see what the final outcome will be. Christopher Chand, FBC News. Cabinet has approved a submission from the Republic of Fiji military forces to send soldiers to the United Nations Observer Mission in the buffer zone between Syria and the Israeli-occupied Golan Heights. This was confirmed to FBC News by the Permanent Secretary in the Prime Minister's Office, Lieutenant Colonel Pio Tikundu 162 military personnel and 11 health officials have been preparing for the mission. Last week, Austria announced it was pulling out of Golan Heights due to escalating trouble between the Syrian government and rebel troops. The developers of Fiji's first casino, 100 Sands, have confirmed they've selected a new site for the casino in Nandi. The original site was on Denarau Island. This is the new location for the casino situated about 300 meters before Denarau Bridge. There are signs of some initial ground works. Speaking from New York in the United States, company chair Larry Clonch says the switch to the new site came during the planning stages. When asked about issues that caused the delays in construction, Clonch only says it relates to unexpected roadblocks thrown in their way. Delays were caused by quite a few different things, and we really just want to focus on the future and not the past right now. So we want to focus on getting the casino and and uh, convention center under construction. We started today, the sign is going up today, and we're just really excited with the location that we have. We're 300 meters before the Denarau Bridge. We're now joined by our West reporter, Christopher Chant, here to shed more light on the whole situation. Chris, it took some pushing from the government, but it seems the developers have dodged some heavy fines by getting things going. That's right, Jackie. There are still a number of issues surrounding 100 cents and the casino project that need clarification. But what we saw at the site indicates that the developers are moving forward. It's also worth pointing out that the company has confirmed there are investors from Europe, Singapore and New Zealand who are involved in this project. It would be interesting to see how the casino project develops in the coming days and weeks, Jackie. We'll definitely be keeping an eye on it. Thanks for that, Chris. And coming up after the break, newly formed political party keeps away from anti-government lobby group.
Nisambu lo binaka, oya wane kama na langi, oni nandoro ngozi yao, maina ziwa kina ruwe na visinga, maina moni iti kina boga rumbu, kena Radio Fiji 1 na ndoma ibiti bongani vya nyanu. Na maka talengana vya ngona sasi vya ni, na tina kaloko ena vya mbongi ni buki lulu. Kena vya mama ni walu ena vya mbongi ni baka rowai, maina mbuza ni walu, ninge na maka. Hope you're enjoying the music right now on Gold FM. Only the classic hits, especially if you're spending your time at home or around the office. I certainly hope you're taking it easy and enjoying the music coming your way. Well, I got a whole lot more to keep you moving and to keep you going right up until you uh, reach lock off time. I'm Kara. Join me every weekday from 2 to 7 on the ride, only on Gold FM. Welcome back. You're watching FBC News. Prime Minister Vorenke Mbaini Marama says the new constitution will empower those Fijians who have been economically deprived. He was speaking to the people of Lomaivuna in Naita Siri, saying the constitution will obligate future governments to achieve decent living for all Fijians through economic empowerment. Apisolome Dokar reports. The government will do everything in its power to help the socially economically deprived. Fiji will have a new constitution which will guarantee and protect every person's right to including housing and sanitation, reasonable access to transportation, adequate food, clean water, a just minimum wage, uh, social security schemes and education. The proposed Bill of Rights include a number of non-negotiables. This, according to the Prime Minister, safeguard average citizens from mere lip service. These rights cannot be tampered with or weakened in any way because Fijians know that different governments have delivered very different results, especially for ordinary people. This is no longer the case under my government, nor should it be the case in the future. The Prime Minister was in Loma Ibuna High School to open a new teller centre and says development drives his government. As I keep saying wherever I go, service delivery is my government's most important task. To not just promise better access to things like electricity, water, uh, electricity, clean water, affordable housing, education and transport, but to provide it. The new constitution is expected to be ready by September this year. Apisolome Voka, FBC News. The People's Democratic Party hasn't decided if it will join the United Front for a Democratic Fiji. UFDF is a lobby group made up of Sedelpa, the NFP and the FLP, making a stand against the Mbani Marama government. As Roland Karoy reports, the United Front believes it's only a matter of time. The People's Democratic Party has made its intentions clear. We have not decided to join the United Front yet. Uh, firstly, because we are a new party and we are establishing our structures at the moment, strengthening our structures, we have to go back to our people to see what they want. So far, all they want is a complete new slate of uh, policies, complete new slate of uh, political leaders. Nirmal Singh goes on to say that the UFDF is made up of old politicians who have done nothing but create political chaos and confusion. We don't want to get entrenched into old politics. We don't want to get entrance what, what's happening now. We are looking to the future. The, our supporters are looking for the future and people are looking for the future. People are fed up with politics of past and the politics of today. In response, Dr. Tupeni Mbamba, a member of Sedelpa and the United Front, has rubbished these claims, saying he is in touch with members of the PDP. Yeah, I've talked to them. That's why I'm confident that the people of PDP will be able to join us. We must have a face-to-face -face discussion with the people in that group, and uh, I know I know the, the, the office holders. Dr. Mbamba says the comments made by the PDP holds no credibility as it does not quote any leaders of the party. However, Nirmal Singh maintains they are a new party with a new direction which it intends to keep, and that's the way forward. Roland Koroy, FBC News. The first program to eradicate the American iguana from Fiji has been launched in Suva. The species was illegally brought into the country and released on Gamea Island. Since then, they've migrated to Lavala, Matangi and Taviuni. A bounty is now offered for the capture of the reptiles. American iguanas were first sighted on Gamea in 2003 and its presence was confirmed six years later. Experts have been studying the behavior of this pest and efforts are now underway to eliminate them.
Bounty is only uh, one measure for the eradication of, uh, of uh, the American iguana. It's, it's not the measure, it's one of the measures that we would like to undertake and it begins uh, this month. NGO Nature Fiji Merengeti Viti says there has been instances when local iguanas were caught, a risk they are not willing to take as it is an endangered species. Uh, though we've had training with quite a few of the, of the temporary biosecurity officers, um, even after a year when they happen to catch an iguana, they still need uh, confirmation from us that it is indeed an American iguana. An American iguana lays around 70 eggs. If not eradicated, it can have an economic impact. We know that they are feeding with the terror leaves, and that is a big threat to the terror industry. It uh, gets us around 20, more than 20 million in uh, export revenue. And it is, uh, gets out from uh, the uh, established sites into the tourism uh, areas. It is another big threat. Those who will catch this pest will be paid by the Biosecurity Authority of Fiji. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. Time for sports now. Weekend coming up, Jamie. What does it have in store for us? Well, I'll tell you what, Jackie. Suva is going to erupt with soccer crazy supporters as the Vodafone Fiji fact kicks off. We can expect district flags flown all over the city and fans in full support at the NZ Stadium over the weekend. Well, after the break, we'll take a look at how preparations are coming for the Fiji FA and what the fans are in for. Stay with us. How would you like to spend your morning? You could spend your morning like this. Or you could spend it like this. Tune in to The Morning Ride every weekday morning from 9 a.m. till 12 p.m. right here on Today FM, Today's Seed Music. Welcome back, you're watching FBC Sports. Less than 24 hours remain before the start of the first major football tournament of the year. And in preparing for it, the Fiji Football Association has left no stones unturned. Fiji FA says fans will be guaranteed a soccer fiesta over the next two days. Shelvin Chan reports. It's just last-minute checks to sort out ID cards, but otherwise it's all systems ready to go. Fiji FA feels it's going to be a good weekend. And there are a lot of interest on the radio itself, and so the things are hotting up and we're expecting a good turnout, good performance, especially on the new surface that we have at the uh, ANZ Stadium. Two days ago, the ANZ Stadium enjoyed a capacity crowd. Fiji FA are hoping for a similar turnout. Ours is a two-day event here and a three-day event in Hendi. So we will have to spread out the crowd over the five days. We don't expect the full turnout on the first day or second day. But no doubt, the expectations are there. We, will, we are looking forward at a reasonable turnout. And many people, as you say, from the country will come to see what the stadium is like. Fans have been guaranteed a good time and football will not be the only entertainment. We're arranging with Vodafone and uh, with the, with also we'll be involving FBC, maybe the halftime uh, uh, entertainment and shootouts and all the rest of it. Vodafone is prepared to give out gifts, prizes, uh, phones, etc. There is good news for those who are hoping to spend the full day at the ANZ Stadium. Yangona can be consumed on the embankment and Fiji Sports Council have allowed fans to bring in food as well. Shalvin Chand, FBC Sports. With all the anticipation of the Vodafone Fiji fact, FBC Sports spoke to fans on who they think will win this year's first football tournament. So gonna win the in the final. My team is Reva and I think uh, Reva is gonna win the Fiji fact. I am 100 percent sure it's only one that may, uh, men with a black, it's BA. That's 100 percent sure. Nobody uh, no team can beat BA. That's 100 percent sure Ba will gonna Ba will be a champ of Fiji fact. 
Suba will prevail. The best to my Suba team and uh, wish them all the best for the young brigade. I think they will make it to the same final. My team is Suba. I think they will do it again. The success of the Fiji Classic All Blacks match has encouraged the Fiji Sports Council to demand recognition as a host for international matches. Stakeholders are excited about the Oceania Sevens in three months, where Suba's NZ Stadium gets another chance to shine. Elena McDonald has more. After a good turnout, several boxes have been ticked, endorsing the ANZ Stadium as an international sporting venue. All sites are now set on the Oceania Sevens in September to impress the powers that be. I think what everybody needs to know is we need everybody's support for that event. That is the time that IRB are coming to say Fiji can do it. Easier said than done. So to get the ball rolling, the Fiji Sports Council's set up a new committee to spearhead the campaign to become a host nation for the major sports event. That committee will encompass the rugby union, the commercial, the chambers of commerce, the um, Ministry of Tourism. The government's been assisting in hosting tournaments every year. Now they're going that one step higher. So it won't, it's not a responsibility of FRU, it's a responsibility of the community. We all have to do this. If we want it, let's all go out and get it. Talks were held with the International Rugby Board only last month, and they've given some handy tips. I've given us some very good hints. Uh, we have spoken briefly to the Ministry of Tourism about it, and we've certainly spoken to the Prime Minister about it. It's not all the ANZ Stadium. The Fiji Sports Council will be using venues like the Grand Pacific Hotel and other upcoming developments to strengthen Fiji's position and make our bid all that more attractive. Elena McDonald, FBC Sports. The baby flying Fijians have one last chance to improve their rankings in this year's Junior World Championship in France. Their 46-12 loss to Australia this morning was the third consecutive defeat in pool play. To better their standings, the team will need to first beat Samoa in the ninth place semi-final and the winner from the Scotland-USA match. Two Fijian players have been selected into the East Asia Pacific squad to participate at the International Cricket Council's EAP Quad Series later this year. Yandrana batsman Sikobe Ravoka and Ami fast bowler Tukana Tava were selected into the 14-member team, which is made up of players from within the East Asia Pacific region. Cricket Fiji is delighted with this news, saying that this paves the way forward for other local cricketers. We, we want a lot of kids playing cricket. But what we do have in, uh, as an incentive is, uh, is the tours and now uh, representing the region, the Pacific region, in, uh, international, in an international event against top nations around the country, around the, uh, around the uh, globe. So uh, this, is, uh, this is a step forward for Cricket Fiji and we're very happy with on uh, our achievements of all the tours. The tournament will be held in Brisbane, Australia in August. Before I go, FPC's build-up to the Vodafone Fiji fact begins in 30 minutes. We'll have Fiji FA President Rajesh Patel and CEO Bob Kumar live in studio. That's it from me tonight. Good evening. Singatoka based Pacific Green Limited has announced a final dividend of 0 0.02 cents per share for the financial year ended 31st December 2012. The company recorded a turnover of more than $9.9 .9 million. Profit after tax came to $352,000. Dividend payouts will total over $152,000. Time for weather now. Jen, what's the latest update? Hi Jackie, it's that time of the week, TGIF. But on with the weather, showers in Suva and Savo Savo with cloudy skies in Lambasa and the west. Let's see what the chart says. Temperatures were all extremely close today. Only a degree or two separated the major centres. Nandi had the highest for a change with 30 degrees. 
Now, since the Fiji Fact kicks off tomorrow, soccer-loving fans can expect things to get a little muddy. Rain is forecast for Suva tomorrow, but everyone else can expect drier conditions with some clouds in between. And Chitra Duffy should be one very happy man right now. He managed to capture a beautiful Tavuni sunrise and was kind enough to send it over. Cheers to those of you living in Tavuni. You get to see the sunrise before anyone else in the world. That wraps things up for me this week. Be sure to stay safe and stay smiling. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. And a quick look at the headlines. Pirated copies of the Fiji vs. Classic All Blacks game are circulating among DVD outlets. Cabinet has approved the deployment of soldiers to the observer mission in Golan Heights on the border of Syria and Israel. And Prime Minister assures that the new constitution will bring positive change to Fiji. On to our poll question and we ask, should we have a national ID card? As always, visit www.fbc.com.fj to answer. Remember to send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj. That's Friday Night News. I'll be back again on Monday. Until then, have a safe and enjoyable weekend. Good night. I wake up in the morning, I prefer to go down to the gym, get a bit of physical work done. Also, later on in the day, I decide to go through for meditation. I do a bit of reading to find out what the latest songs are. A bit of research. And for me, it's all about the listeners. Hey, what's up? I'm Rio, and this is the Traffic Jam every weekday from 3 o'clock to 7, only on Today FM. Today is hit music. What's up? Bula, I'm DJ Toro. Join me every Monday to Thursday, 7 until midnight. The premium classics on Gold FM, only the classic hits.